Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and this is COP3530 Data Structures coming to you from Daytona State College. And today we're going to talk a little bit about sorting. I'm not going to try to get you to be an expert on every single sorting algorithm, but you want to really understand the importance of sorting and how the different things that you use to figure out which sorting algorithm to use are important. So the bottom line is that you should know what sorting algorithm to apply to different situations. Doesn't mean you have to write new sorting algorithms because that's just something that, you know, that's in the deep field of computer science. However, do realize that even today, new algorithms for sorting are being thought up and actually brought into the literature. Sorting itself is really just being able to put things in a specific order. And you, know, you do it all the time. Sorting is something that people just inherently do. You put things in alphabetical order. You just, it, it's a normal function of life. However, when we're talking computer science, we're talking about how to do it fast and how to do it reliably. So let's talk about how are you going to evaluate what algorithm to use while sorting. Well, we all know about computational complexity or time complexity. The big O is a great useful tool for figuring out what is going to be the sorting algorithm that you use. But if you start, if you just use that, you're probably going to make a mistake because it's not the only factor that, that you need to consider when doing sorting. So computational complexity, yes, important, but not the full story. Another one is memory use because some sorting, sorting algorithms are what we call in place. What really do we mean by that? Well, we mean that we don't need extra memory to actually perform the sorting function. We can just do it with the memory that is right there associated with the array or whatever you're sorting already. Another one is the concept of stability. And then the, other, then the last one being, how do we actually get those comparisons and the swaps to actually be efficient? Let's talk a little bit about what we call stability. Stability means that if you've got something that's an array or something that's a group of objects and they're already in some order and you're going to sort them, well, every now and then you're going to run into an object that is the same as another object. Okay, well, what do you do in that situation if you're sorting? Well, stability means you maintain the order that was originally there. So if you're comparing A with A, that first A and the second A are still different objects. And you keep that order just right there and you don't lose it. So if you have a situation where you need to maintain stability, you've also got to consider that when picking the algorithm that you're going to use to sort. Realize that you've got almost a hundred different algorithms that you can use to choose from. Now, in the situation where you do actually have to deal with some sort of object that actually has the same comparison operator as the other one or the same object, then you can always use some sort of secondary comparison as a tiebreaker too. So there are ways to deal with this. So the most fundamental piece of the sorting is the swap. I'm not gonna go through every possibility and combination of the swap, but I want you to understand that there are different ways to do this. So for example, the basic swap function, A and B, you set a temporary to A, you set A equal to B, and then you bring B back to the temp, and voila, they've been switched. Now, you do need to compare different types of, uh, and swap in different scenarios. And what I mean by different scenarios? Well, you may be sorting something that is a singly linked list or an array or a doubly linked list. So what you have to do when you're in this situation is you're going to have to be able to figure out what is the best swap mechanism for the situation that you're in. And when you're figuring out which swap mechanism to use, you also have to take into account the concept of swapping content and swapping pointers. So what you're seeing here is different ways of actually swapping out the objects by swapping out the pointers to the different objects. There is an advantage to doing it this way because if you are swapping out the pointers and keeping the content of each of the individual objects intact, you're not gonna lose relations between 
different things that might be inside of that object. So let me repeat this again. If you're just switching the pointers, then whatever's inside the object, if the object contains more than one thing, only one of which you're actually using for the comparison for the swap, those relationships may be important because they're inside of that object. If you are swapping the content, you may only end up swapping the comparison operator and lose the relationship with the other things that are inside that object. You don't want to do that. So, does that mean that swapping the content is a bad way to perform the sort algorithm? No, that is not what that means at all. It just means that you have to take into account what all is involved with the objects that you're sorting. And typically when you're sorting, you're sorting on a comparison operator and a comparison operator can just be a single property of an object and you have to take into account the other properties of that object and how those are gonna be affected by the sort. So, swapping contents, and actually in the case of swapping contents, it's relatively simple too. Just always remember, don't believe, leave behind those other things that might be related. Now, let's talk about some basic sort algorithms, just really quick one. The one that most of you probably have actually already do in your head all the time is the bubble sort. It's not the most efficient of all the sort algorithms. It's O of n squared. And um, we've got algorithms that are much more efficient. O of n log n is a much more efficient algorithm. But it's basic. You look at two different things that are next to each other, and if they're out of order, you swap them. And then you move on to the next one, and you swap them. Okay, what that does is it has a tendency of bubbling. It bubbles different objects that need to be at the top of the swap to the top, and by nature, the ones that need to be at the bottom of the, of, the, of the sort order will end up at the bottom. Now, O of n squared, you may say, well, that's terrible because I've got ones that are much more efficient. But there are situations where the bubble sort is actually the most efficient algorithm. For example, okay, if you're dealing with, let's say, a sort where it's almost completely sorted, and maybe only one or possibly two objects are out of order, that O of n squared actually becomes O of n because you don't have to go through it n squared times. You go through it once and the one item that was out of order bubbles to the top, you go through it again to check and you're good. Okay, so we're gonna go back and look at uh, just at that swapping because you saw the bubble sort and the bubble sort swaps things that are next to each other. Well, for many of the other sort algorithms, you're gonna need to swap objects that are not next to each other, that are actually a good distance away. So you need an efficient swap algorithm to do that. And there are other swap algorithms to do that. But I did want to point out that the concept of swapping adjacent items and the concept of swapping non-adjacent items, even though it's different, it's also very similar. So let's look at some other sort algorithms, like the quick sort algorithm, which is O of n log n and also is an in-place algorithm. You don't have to have a ton of extra memory, or really any extra memory at all, except for one little temp variable, to be able to use the quicksort algorithm. So how does it work? Well, I'm not gonna go through this because there are, I mean, I'm not gonna go through step-by-step -step the quicksort algorithm. There are fantastic animations online of pretty much every algorithm, and I tell you, the best way to see how an algorithm works is to do two things. One is, follow the actual animations that you can see online of the algorithm in, in doing it. And then the other one is try to implement that and see how well you implement it. Just follow it. And it's the way that you're gonna do these. But I do wanna point out some of the important algorithms that you will commonly choose when sorting. Quick sort being one. Bubble sort is not tremendous. The one we just showed you, bubble sort is not tremendously used in practice. Basic reason is, for the generic scenario, it's very inefficient. Merge sort, which is also one of those really interesting ones, and the only reason I'm gonna actually gonna spend any time at all looking at the merge sort is just because it is so interest, interesting. So this concept of taking an existing list and then breaking it up into the pieces that are already sorted, and then those already sorted pieces, merging them together. 
So it, what you're seeing here is this concept of a merge sort, where I've got an unsorted list at the start, and I say, oh, let's break it up into everything that's already sorted. So my three and the four, well, that's already sorted, but my two is out of order, so that's a new sublist. And my one to seven, well, that's sorted. My five, eight, nine, that's already sorted, but seven to five is not. Okay, so now I've broken up my original list into one, two, three, four, five little separate sublists. And then what I do is I take those individual separate sublists and I start merging them together. Well, the efficiency of that algorithm is really the efficiency of the merge. So if you have a merge algorithm that's efficient, you've got efficient sort algorithm. So things to consider, and not just because this is going to show up on the exam, which I always put these on the exam, because this really lets me know if you've thought deeper. But really, that thinking deeper is important. Have you looked at what's the most efficient way to solve the problem? Which means, have you looked at those sort algorithms? Because almost every very, I mean, there's just like every problem I seem to run into involves at least sorting at some point, okay? Do you understand the concept of the worst case scenario, the average case scenario, and the best case scenario? Okay, do you understand how the individual sub-algorithms might be important to the overall efficiency of the algorithm that you use, and also that different algorithms work better on different structures? We showed you lists. You also have sorting in trees, and you also have sorting in arrays. So you got to be able to do them all. Now, on Wikipedia is probably the best article on sorting anywhere. It is complete detail with the efficiencies, the worst case, the best case, items to consider, all laid out with all of them side by side. The memory requirements associated, the stability requirements, it's all right there. So all you really got to do is just go to sorting algorithms and you know, thank the folks that actually entered all this at Wikipedia. I've got my little contributions in there too because I like to actually make sure that everything is up to date and uh, you know, very well done. So if you're going through some of the sorting algorithms, you'll probably see some of the little stuff that I've written and contributed to Wikipedia. But it's just a great thing. It's a great resource. It's amazing that we have resources like this now that's, that are fantastic. But what you need to be able, I mean, a good reference that you can go back to and say, I know what I need to do to choose the best algorithm and get this. And why is this important? Well, if you're doing programming and you have to choose or write these algorithms, making the best choice can have a long-term effect because efficiency, one thing you don't like to do is click the button and wait. You'd rather like the things to happen instantly. And that's what this all boils down to. So hopefully you really enjoyed hearing a little bit about what we were talking about with sorting, the key elements of the sorting algorithms, which are going to be important, the ability to choose the correct sorting algorithm and to apply those sorting algorithms. Thank you very much. Dr. Ron England signing out with sorting.